Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 5th, 2022, right around 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including what to expect for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season a look, and a look at what the new data suggests. Could we be having a historically active 2022 Atlantic hurricane season? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is mostly quiet across the basin. We have Hurricane Bonnie over here. This is now a major hurricane in the East Pacific. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But elsewise across the tropical Atlantic, all else remains pretty quiet. We do have a few tropical waves, pretty strong wave right now south and east of the Cabo Verde Islands. This will be moving westward over the next couple of days. Not really expected to develop. Uh, and really along the intertropical convergence zone down here, just not really any development expected. Pretty hostile conditions for the next couple of weeks, which is certainly some good news. But either way, some showers and thunderstorms expected for portions of the islands over the next few days. In, so in the Atlantic Basin, again, no Atlantic tropical development is expected over the next five days. It looks pretty quiet. And in the East Pacific Basin, we have Hurricane Bonnie over here, Category 3 major hurricane. And also uh, we have a low chance of de additional development south of where Bonnie is right now, moving off towards the north and west. And if you guys do want, if you guys do like these maps, they are uh, available on the eTrackers uh, Twitter site. So make sure to go check that out. I'll link that in the description down below. So again, looking at Hurricane Bonnie right now. So sustained winds are now increased to about 115 miles per hour, making this a Category Three major hurricane. But we notice what's lurking for the storm as we progress over the next couple of days. Some pretty stable air indicated by these cumulus clouds. Over here is pretty stable air, these stratiform clouds further to the north. So these indicate dry, stable air, and the storm will be moving into that and is expected to weaken. Either way, still some rip currents expect for portions of coastal Mexico, but otherwise there's no substantial threats for that area. So turning our attention to what could be happening across the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of weeks. Well, this is the GFS forecast. This is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. This is valid for 0Z or 8 p.m. this evening. And we notice across the Atlantic Basin that it is pretty quiet. Here's Hurricane Bonnie over here. That's what we want to look for if we were to get a very well-organized storm in the Atlantic. And so throughout the whole entire forecast period, you actually see, even through our 80, uh, 384, this is through the 21st of July, there's no activity across the Atlantic Basin that is expected. Now, with that being said, if we actually look at the GFS ensembles and we look at the mean sea level pressure, now you notice that what's going to be happening over the next couple of weeks is we will have generally lower than normal pressures across most of the Southeast US, the Gulf of Mexico and the Southwestern Atlantic. This actually is pretty much the prime time for these uh, frontal systems to come down from the you know continental United States dips southward and then eventually stall out as it modifies under the tropical air mass in the Atlantic and ultimately that favors tropical cyclone formation on the tail end of these fronts. So I'm not really saying that anything is going to happen but this is kind of the prime time months June and July for that and then once we start getting out into August that's when we have to tr you know really start to watch the tropical Atlantic over here. So speaking of, let's look at the sea surface temperature anomaly map, shall we? So this is the updated map for July 4th, so yesterday. And we noticed that, again, in the East Pacific, in the Equatorial Pacific, La Nina conditions still ongoing, though we have seen some substantial warming out here across the kind of the Nino 2 and 3 and kind of the Nino 3, 4 area over here. But otherwise, all else is pretty good, at least for right now. It seems like we're still entrenched within the atmospheric La Nina at the very least. And we're expecting multiple easterly wind bursts to occur across the uh, dateline over here, across the equatorial Pacific, which will cool the waters again. And subsequently, in the Atlantic Basin, rather, uh, we have really warmed up the basin. We have seen some cooling over here, but that will begin to reverse as we get anomalous westerly winds towards the end of the month. And then we also have this uh, cooling going on in the subtropics, and that actually is pretty favorable uh, for reducing the instability in the subtropics and creating more instability down here in the deep tropics. 
So the new European ECMWF uh, forecast came out today, and I think there's some very interesting things to glean from this. All right. So first of all, we're looking at the accumulated cyclone energy index, the ACE index. And this is basically an overall score, if you will, of how busy the season actually is. Okay. So ACE index determines below average season versus average or well above average or hyperactive. Okay. So what we're looking at here is for really all three basins, the West Pacific, East Pacific, and the Atlantic. So we'll focus mainly on the East Pacific and Atlantic for now, right? So the forecast mean is basically showing in the East Pacific about nine, uh, really about 0.9. So th what this is basically suggesting is about 900%, uh, I believe, is what that translates to uh, of that of the mean. <clears throat> and so basically what we're really trying to see here and, and suggest is that the East Pacific Basin will be generally quite than, than normal because if you look at the climate mean, it's suggesting 1.0, which is definitely a little bit less than what the forecast mean is showing. Uh, so we are looking at a less busy season in the East Pacific. And subsequently in the Atlantic Basin, we have about 140% of the climate mean or of the forecast mean rather and that is suggesting an above average hurricane season this year and of course then in the west pacific as well things are quiet as well now one thing that's very interesting here so this is actually a comparison between 2017 and 2020 now obviously these two or in 2022 rather now obviously these two seasons are vastly different in the way that they're going to shape out. Obviously 2022 will not be the same as 2017, but there is some interesting comparisons that we can draw and some inferences that we can draw from uh, these comparisons. So going back to August, September, and October of 2017, we noticed that the deep tropics was above average with a cooler subtropics and warmer uh, up here in the high seas of the North Atlantic. And if we jump to the forecast for 2022, we noticed that the MDR is actually kind of right above average to slightly just above the long-term average there. Uh, still with a cooler subtropical Atlantic and warmer up here in the northern high seas. And that certainly goes to suggest a more amplified blocking pattern this year. Compare that with what we're looking at here. This is basically the precipitation anomalies. And this is kind of showing that we have enhanced precipitation anomalies through the main development region into the Caribbean and then continues into the Gulf of Mexico with a kind of drier subtropical Atlantic. So what this basically goes to tell me is that tropical cyclones will generally be favored this year in the MDR through the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. This is not necessarily an explicit tropical cyclone track forecast. We can't really get that specific from this. But there's definitely some inferences that we can take away. And that's one of the things that I'm starting to take away from that. So that pretty much lines up with my forecast that I was calling for earlier. And if we also kind of look at this again, this is just another look at everything. We basically see that this is for the month of September. We have basically wet anomalies continuing well into the Caribbean and also into the Gulf of Mexico. And those extend even to Florida, Texas, Louisiana. Not saying those places will be impacted, but this definitely goes to suggest that we'll see pretty anomalous favorable conditions out across here. And then also kind of a cooler and more dry subtropical Atlantic, which is certainly allowing for more deep tropical activity. Now combine that with the tropical cyclone density forecast. Again, it's kind of expecting that generally speaking, the islands could be at risk this year. Again, over here across the Gulf Coast states and, of course, the usual spots, including Florida and then up across the northeast coast here. So there definitely could be the potential for some impacts this year to portions of the northeast U.S. And I'll be sure to stay on top of those. But make sure that you have your hurricane preparedness plan ready to go. It is now beginning to approach the peak of the season. Again, we are expecting development uh, that could occur even into later July and then certainly August, September, and October look to be very, very busy. So again, make sure you have your hurricane preparedness plans ready to go. Evacuation routes already pre-planned. That's a very important thing. And if you live on the islands, you know, make sure that you are fortified as best as you possibly can be. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.